The reason for his choosing Bayt al-Maqdis was two. One was the close connection to the people of the book that they had, as said by some of the scholars of commentary. And secondly, it's due to the trial that was faced by them from the Arabs and what was going on at the time, as said by Az Zujaj. <clears throat> and likewise, we made you a middle nation. Allah the Exalted says, and likewise, we made you a middle nation so that you be witnesses over humanity and that the messenger be a witness over you. We did not make the Qibla which you were upon, except so that you know who follows the messenger from the one who's turned on his heels. وَإِن كَانَتْ لَكَ بِيَوْرَةً إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهُ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ This is a great and grave thing for someone to do, except for those who Allah has guided. Allah shall never cause your faith to go astray. Indeed, Allah is benevolent and compassionate to the people. Likewise, we made you a middle nation. The reason for this being revealed is because the Jews had been saying, our Qibla is the Qibla of the prophets. And we are the just ones among the people. So this ayah was sent down, as said by Muqatiyah. Ummah means the jama'ah, a group of people that are gathered upon one thing. This word wasp, middle, also means adal, just. As said by Ibn Abbas, Abu Sa'id, Mujahid, and Qatada. As well as Ibn Qutayba. The word wasp also here means not just just, but it means the best. Just like when the Exalted One says, Qala awsatuhum, the best of them said. Surah Al-Qalam, the 68th Surah, Ayah 28. So when it is said, the principle being given that the best of things is always the middle of them. And exaggeration or falling short are both blameworthy things. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah mentioned that actions and being a middle nation are connected truly to the Muslims. Because the Muslims, they do not fall short in their faith as the Jews did. Because the Jews kill the prophets, replace the book of Allah. The Jews don't exaggerate in their religion as the Christians do. Because they claim that Isa is the son of Allah. Abu Sulaiman at Dimashqi has said, in this statement, in this ayah, is much ellipsis that is being used in which you are being told literally I have made you a middle nation between the two other Qiblas because the Jews will often be facing westward and the Christians will be facing east and you are between that close quote now, there's just two things that need to be mentioned then. So when we're talking about the Qibla, remember in your minds the map of Arabia spreading out in the shape of a boot. The Jews are facing westward. Why are they facing westward? They're facing westward because it's facing the temple compound that they had in Jerusalem near Mount Moriah. That's why the Jews are facing west. So when you go to, go to a Jewish synagogue in this city, or in Melbourne, or in London, in Stamford Hill, 
Golders Green, or you go to Manchester, or you go to Los Angeles, or you go to Chicago, or you go to Williamsburg in New York, or you go to Tel Aviv. Every single Orthodox synagogue, the place where the Torah is kept, is in a location that is facing Jerusalem. So when the scholar goes to take the Torah out of the cabinets, and he takes its protective cloth off of it, and he lifts it aloft, and he unrolls the scrolls, and he walks down the steps, he's reenacting the reception of the Torah at Mount Sinai. And all the Jews are facing their Qibla, which is Jerusalem. Christians are facing east because of a lot of the Orthodox churches face east because of the wise men coming from the east, seeing the star in the east. So if you go in Orthodox churches, again, Protestants don't exist at this time. Their churches, some of them may be facing Washington, D.C., the White House. We don't know. It's irrelevant. Protestants are a spinoff that came from the 1400s, so they don't even figure into this. Which is why our fuqaha, a lot of ulama, a lot of ulama, and this will come up later when we talk about uh, nikah, and you're talking about the conditions for being able to marry one of the people of the book. Many of the ulama do not consider Protestants people of the book. And we'll, we'll come to further re reason why that is. But when you're looking at those pre-Protestant Orthodox churches, they're facing the east. The Jews are facing west because they're facing the temple. The Muslims are in between that because when you're looking at Medina and what was going on, the Muslims are between. They're the middle nation. They're facing Mecca. So when someone asks you the next time, well, I don't understand. What's the big thing? You have to get out your compasses and figure out where you are, and, and I don't understand. And you say, you know what? The next time you go to Golders Green, you tell them that too. Because we're not the only people that have a Qibla. Jews have a Qibla. Orthodox Christians have a Qibla. You tell that to them as well. Tell them, why do you have to have your synagogue and hear what's going on? Why can't you have it in the West? Why can't it be facing New York City? Why does it have to face Jerusalem? Because those are nations that have a qibla. Imam Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, he says, quote, When Allah said, we made you a middle nation to be witnesses over humanity, this has two things that need to be remembered about it. One is that you shall testify for the prophets against their people. Remember what was narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, There shall come the Prophet on the day of resurrection and with him will be one man. There shall come a Prophet, the Prophet on the day of resurrection who will only have two followers. There shall come the Prophet on the day of resurrection and he will have more than that. And it will be said to him, Did you convey, convey this message? And did you receive this message? He, Allah, will say to the people. The people will say, no. It will be said to the prophet, did you convey the message? The prophet will say, most assuredly I did. It will then be said, who can testify on your behalf of this? And that prophet will say, Muhammad and his ummah. And they shall testify that the messengers conveyed all of that which was commanded. And it will be said, how did you come to know this? They will say that those they will say that nation of Muhammad, we were informed by this by our prophet and told that the messengers had conveyed their message and we trust him as he said the truth in this regard. And this is collected by Imams Ahmed, Bukhari, Tirmidhi, Nisa'i, Nisa'i and Ibn Majah. And this is the understanding of Ikrima and Qatada. The second point is that this nation, they are witnesses for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over all of the other nations. Jews, Christians, fire worshippers and what have you. As is said by Mujahid. And the messenger has been made over you a witness that is referring to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why will he be bearing witness against them? There are three things that need to be remembered. One is he will be witnessing their actions. 
as said by Ibn Abbas, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, and Ibn Zayd. Secondly, is he will have conveyed to them the message that he has received, as said by Qatada and Muqatil. And thirdly, he shall testify regarding their faith, as said by Abu Aliya. So the expression in this ayah, against you, alaykum, actually means lakum. And Ikrimah has said, no one of the people shall ask this ummah anything except its prophet. Now, the statement where the exalted one said, and we did not make this qibla, we did not make the qibla which you were upon, except so that we might know those who follow the messenger from the one who is turned on his heels. It means that the qibla of Bayt al Maqdis was not given except so that they might know who follows the messenger. Now, there are four points that need to be remembered about this. One is that so that it might be distinguished and the people may see those who follow the messenger. Secondly, so that they might distinguish between the believers and unbelievers, as said by Ibn Abbas. Thirdly, so that we might show the truth in this regard. And this is understood by a large group of the people of commentary that this is what the ayah refers to. And fourthly, is that so that those people there might know that these people are the followers of the messenger. Now in this ayah when it says, so that we might know, so that it might be known those who follow the messenger from the one who, from those who turn on their heels, it means that those who return to kufr, because to turn on one's heels is a reference to returning to kufr as said by Ibn Zayd and Muqatil. When Allah says, and it is a great and weighty thing indeed, this ayah is pointing to two things. One, it's referring to the fact that what was great and weighty was turning towards the Kaaba, as said by Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, Qatada, Ibn Da'ima, and Muqatil. And secondly, it was that it's also referring to Bayt al-Maqdis before the change of Qibla, as said by Abu Aliya and Az Zujaj. And Allah shall not cause your iman, your faith, to go to waste. This ayah was sent down for this reason. When the Muslims changed the Qibla, they said, Messenger of Allah. What do you say about our brothers who they died? And they were praying facing towards Bayt al -Maqtis. So Allah sent down the ayah. And Allah shall not cause your faith to go to waste. The faith mentioned here that's intended is Salah. And it's called, Salah is also called at times Iman. Because Salah joins between word, intention, and deed. And it is, according to Al-Furraq, that whoever had died from among the Muslims before the Qibla had changed, they're still in the same religion. Along with the believers that had changed the Qibla, that are alive. They are all still in the same religion. Now for the words Lara'uf al Rahim, Ibn Kathir, Nafi, Ibn Amr, Hafs, Hafs and Asim recite Lara'uf throughout. And there are others who recite it, Abu Amr, Hamza al-Kasai, and Abu Bakr, and Asim. 
recited in which it is different to this.